Hi, so in this video, I want to talk about using comprehensions to write more Pythonic code. And often I see code written this way. So let me just copy paste that from the notebook. It's linked below, it's available in GitHub. And basically it's this, we are starting with a numbers list and we want to create a new list that is gonna contain the squares of each of those numbers. So I see it done this way. Somebody initializes a new list called squares, just empty. Then they loop through number in numbers and then they calculate the square and append that to the squares list. And of course you get the correct result, but this isn't Pythonic code. Now, sometimes I even see that written this way and I've done a previous video on how to avoid indexing to access elements in a collection when you're iterating over collections and it's written this way. So instead of looping for numbers and numbers, you're creating a loop that uses indexing. So it's gonna start at zero and end at four, right? The length of the numbers is five. So we're gonna stop at just short of five. So it's gonna be four, which is the last index of numbers. And then you access the element in the numbers list by using indexing. So this is even more egregious than the first example. So the pattern here is what are we doing? Well, essentially we're transforming one list into another. And in general, when we talk about comprehensions, we're transforming one iterable into another iterable. So we have list comprehensions that can transform one iterable into a list, but we have other types of comprehensions as well, and I'll get to them in a bit, but we have things like dictionary comprehensions, set comprehensions, and then lastly, I'll talk about generator expressions which also are comprehensions, but they behave a little bit differently. So whenever you find yourself writing code that basically declares an empty list, which is gonna be used for your final results, and builds it up using an append inside the loop that iterates over another iterable, you should really be thinking about list comprehensions. A list comprehension in Python is a very simple and expressive way of transforming one iterable into another list, in this case, because it's a list comprehension. So how would we have written that using a list comprehension? Well, very simply, we would have said squares equals number squared for number in numbers, just like so. And we get the same result. So you can compare and contrast this line of code with these lines of code that were needed to do the same thing. So as you can see, the comprehension syntax is much cleaner and far more expressive. Now list comprehensions even support filtering the elements being transformed. For example, we might only want to retain the squares that are even numbers in our squares array. So we will only want to keep four and 16. So let's try doing it the non-Pythonic way first. This is where I'm gonna create my empty list then I'm going to loop for number in numbers, and I am not going to use that horrendous syntax of using indexing, as I showed you just now. So what do I want to do? Well, I need to calculate that square, so I'm gonna calculate it and store it in SQ. Then I need to check to see if it's an even number, then I want to append it to the squares. So I can check if it's not odd, so I would do an SQ, mod two, and now we can just say append sq, like so. And so now we'll end up with our squares list only containing the even squares, four and 16. So that's the non-Pythonic way. Now we can use a comprehension instead. Remember I said, whenever you have this kind of thing going on, comprehension. Now comprehensions support this kind of filtering. So let's do it. Squares is equal to, so I'm gonna take the number squared for number in numbers. If not, I'm just gonna repeat that number squared mod two. So basically I've done exactly the same kind of filtering. I'm saying only include in this result here, only include the number if the number squared, you know, divided by two, basically testing to see is it even or odd. So only include number if the number squared is even. And so we end up with exactly the same result at the very end, four and 16. But again, this is using the more Pythonic comprehension syntax. Now, hopefully looking at this, you, you, you have an issue with this code. 
I hope that one thing that you noticed is that we calculated this number squared. So this calculation we had to do twice. We had to do it here because that's what we want to put in our result. And we had to do it here because we have to use that in order to basically be able to perform our if statement. We didn't have that problem here because we stored number squared into a temporary variable then we tested the temporary variable and if it met the criteria, we appended it to the list. So here, this is actually from a performance standpoint worse than the non-Pythonic approach. So that's a very valid point, but one that is easily addressed using Python's assignment expressions, the walrus operators. And if you don't know what that is, I have a previous video on assignment expressions if you need to learn about them. So let's go ahead and now leverage that also to write our comprehension. So I'm going to take the same code. So I'll actually copy both lines. And the difference here is that I'm going to use the walrus operator to essentially assign this, uh, this number squared to a variable called sq. So yes, I need to calculate this number squared. So I'm doing that, but I'm assigning the result to this temporary variable sq. And now I do not have to use number squared here. I can just use SQ. It's already been calculated, right? And so you can check the video out on assignment expressions if you're unclear as to what this is precisely doing. But at the end of the day, we get the same thing. So we were able to essentially have the same kind of performance, right? We're not incurring the cost of having this calculation, the transformation itself of every element done twice. And we've written this in a more Pythonic way. You could even if you wanted to, if the line gets too long, you can of course split this over multiple lines like so, right? If, it's, if you find that more readable, it does exactly the same thing. List comprehensions are not the only types of comprehensions available in Python. You can use comprehensions to create dictionaries, so-called dictionary comprehensions. Remember, the comprehension syntax is basically a way to transform one iterable into another iterable. So we have list comprehensions to transform an iterable into a list, but we also have a dictionary comprehension that allows us to transform one iterable into a dictionary. So let's take a quick look at that. We could say, and of course it also supports the if statement and so on. I'm not gonna get into that again. And let's say that I'm going to iterate for every character in the list essentially of characters a b c d e f g in the iterable of characters a b c d e f g and i'm going to put the character itself as the key in the dictionary and the old value the code point essentially for the character in the value corresponding to that key so when i do that i end up with this dictionary of course you can write this over a single line as well if you prefer now you can create sets the same way. It's just called a set comprehension. So in this case, let me leave it on one line. So we'll do the ordinal value of a character for character in the sequence A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like so. And then you can see we now get a set of values. So here we had a dictionary. The reason that one, you know, the, the reason that this is a dictionary comprehension and this one is a set comprehension, even though they both use these curly braces, is because of what we specify here as the transformed output. It's the key colon value. So Python recognizes that and says, okay, you're creating a set, a uh, dictionary, excuse me. In this other case here, you don't have the colon, you still have the curly braces, so then Python knows, okay, you're creating a set out of this. So that's the only difference. Now, lastly, you also have generator expressions, which have comprehension-like syntax, but actually create an iterator that uses lazy evaluation. That is, it doesn't compute every element of the comprehension ahead of time and store it in memory like a list comprehension would do. Essentially, it just creates an iterator, but it doesn't run anything until you actually start iterating. Then it goes through and transforms you know, basically each element one by one based on your comprehension definition and yields that back. So you don't incur the upfront cost of calculating everything ahead of time and you don't incur the memory cost of having to store everything in memory 
if you had, you know, unlike, for example, a list comprehension. The only thing, of course, with generators, like most iterators, is that you can only iterate over them once. So that's the only drawback. You have to be a little bit careful about that. But if you think to Python's uh, kind of built-in functions and even functions in the standard library, many, many functions are actually iterators. So for example, the zip function. The zip function doesn't create a list, right? It doesn't incur the upfront cost of creating the zip of your iterables. It basically just sets it up as an iterator. And then as you iterate through it, then it produces those results one by one. So it doesn't need to perform the calculations ahead of time. And it doesn't need the memory storage to store all the calculated results ahead of time either. So we can do the same thing using generator functions in Python. And we also have the comprehension equivalent, which is called the generator expression. So here, I'm going to go back to the one that we had here for the squares. Let's just go ahead and take this and copy it down here. And the only difference is that now we use round parentheses. So now we have a generator. So this is a generator object. It hasn't calculated this at all. It's basically waiting for us to iterate through it. So we could iterate through it by using next, for example. That gives us the next value in squares. You can see it's one. If we run that again, we can see it's four, run that again, nine, and so on. Now, let's say I want to iterate through my squares again. Well, I could basically say for EL in squares, like so, and then print EL. So I can just iterate through squares. It's a generator. It's an iterator. But you'll see that I only get the last two now, 16 and 25. That's because I've already partially iterated through squares. So that's what I was telling you about, you know, iterators will only allow you to iterate once. So if I need to iterate through the squares again, I'm going to need to recreate it. So I'm going to basically take that. And now I can iterate through it normally for EL in squares. And I should get everything now because I've recreated the generator. And I have that. I can also iterate through it by basically calling the list function. So I could say list of squares like so. And now I get a list of squares. Or if you wanted a tuple, you could just say tuple of squares. And now you get a tuple back and so on. Now, if you need to therefore iterate through the same generator multiple times, you're going to need to recreate it multiple times. And you might be thinking, whoa, wait a minute. You know, that's expensive creating a generator. And the answer is no, it's not. It's actually very, very cheap. And it's, you know, in many cases, it's going to be better than actually just creating the list. Take a look at this example. Let's say I say squares equals, and I'm going to take the number squared for number in range. And let's say I do 500,000. Okay. And actually, you know what? Let's do 5 billion. Why not? Here, 5 billion. So if this was a list comprehension, I'd be sitting here waiting quite a while for this code to finish. And it would use up a ton of memory as well, because I'm trying to basically calculate and store the square of 5 billion numbers. But with the generator expression, look at what happens when I hit enter, when I, well, shift enter in Jupyter. That's it, right? It executed the code. It was very fast. Why? Well, because as I told you, it doesn't calculate this ahead of time. It basically sets up an iterator that is going to then run each of these one at a time. So now I can say, you know, next on squares, I can iterate through it this way. And I can do that again. I can run that again and I get one and then I get four and then I get nine and so on. So what's happening here is that I'm only performing the calculation number squared as I request next right on squares as I loop through squares. The advantage is that if I don't loop through every element of squares, well, I've just saved myself the cost of calculating 5 billion times and the storage space for it. It's very much like when you read files in Python, when you have an open file, then you can use an iterator to basically read one line at a time from the file. That allows you to open up files that are much, much larger than what would fit in memory. 
So typically in Python, when you read a file, you don't load the entire file up in memory and then process it. You basically read one line at a time and process one line at a time. Assuming, of course, that your algorithm allows you to work on your file one line at a time. But that's typically the way we do things. So you'll find that in Python 3, most things are essentially iterators. Most functions that work on iterables return iterators. They don't return like a list, for example. All right, and that's it for comprehensions and the comprehension syntax. They're highly Pythonic and they make our code more expressive and it's something that you should be using instead of using the other approaches that I showed you that would be more typical in other languages. All right, thanks for watching.